So there is absolutely no denying, and I, I might be slightly biased here, by the line of work I do, that retro gaming is amazing and awesome. However, I do love new and more contemporary video games, especially when they mix old school and new school. And part of that for me is actually trophy and achievement hunting. It's actually something that I really love doing and something that I really think in the last 10, 11 years has revolutionized video games. They really make you kind of go out of your way and do things that you may not necessarily want to do and really gives that extra special game, you know, a leg or two extra to stand on after you've beaten it once, twice, three times. It can really extend how much you play a game and enjoy a game. And for me, that's never a bad thing. You can't go wrong with a good trophy or achievement list for a game. So what are you to do for old games? Well, that's where RetroAchievements.org steps in and helps. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to use RetroAchievements.org in conjunction with LaunchBox and RetroArch. So first, let's head on over to RetroAchievements.org. And in the top right, you're going to see your control panel. Uh, if you're not logged in, it's going to ask you to log in. And if you don't have an account, go ahead and click sign up, set up your username and your password, and make sure that it's a, a password and a username that you can easily remember because we're going to need to manually input it into RetroArch. Now that you have your account created, there's a couple of things that you can do. Now, you can go ahead and download a standalone version of these emulators. However, I personally don't like some of these emulators, um, so it's really up to you how you want to, to handle this. But there are, there are more RetroArch cores per system that will handle uh, you know, retro achievements than what's listed here. However, I do understand if you have a RetroArch version, and if you do, these emulators will work just fine for your retro achievement goodness. However, I will be showing you how to use RetroArch. So over in LaunchBox, go ahead and right click a game that is using RetroArch as its emulator. And if you need help setting up RetroArch as an emulator for any given system, uh, there are tutorials that we've done for RetroArch. So scroll down below this video, click show more, and there's going to be a link to our tutorials uh, playlist page that has all of our system tutorials in a single playlist for you to view. So if you need help setting up a system uh, like SNES and GBA, uh, those tutorials will be in that playlist. However, Back in RetroArch, uh, currently uh, there is a bug for some reason with what I'm about to show you. Not with Retro Achievements specifically, but with RetroArch itself. And it's a minor bug, but uh, it might be a little off-putting for the end user, so that's why I'm going to mention it real fast. So let's go over one to the settings tab with our arrow keys. Uh, Z and X is also no longer forward and back. It is now enter and backspace. So with the arrow keys, let's go down to configuration. We're going to press enter and we're going to make sure that we check the box save configuration on exit. And we're going to make sure that it says on. If it says off, uh, this bug is going to rear its ugly head. If it's on, that's actually really good. Speaking of configurations, back in the first tab, uh, I will be using my RetroArch.cfg. If you do go watch the other tutorials for something like SNES, I use custom configs for a lot of my cores. If you do have custom configs, what I would suggest you to do is to load a game instead of right clicking and opening RetroArch, the, not the default way, but the way that doesn't load a core in a game as well. I would load your cores uh, through LaunchBox so it also loads your custom configs and then I would do what I'm about to show you on each of your custom configs because remember custom configs have separate settings for each config file so do keep that in mind and 
If uh, you are just now hearing of custom configs for the first time, there will be a tutorial for that at a later date as well. Let's go right one more time into the settings tab and let's go all the way down to achievements. Then you're going to press enter and then you're going to make sure that the enable achievements is on. You can also enable test unofficial achievements as well if you would like. And then you may also uh, activate achievements hardcore mode. And what this will do is what it actually says in the UI now. Enable or disable save states, cheats, rewind, fast forward, pause and slow motion for all games. I personally love save states, so I'm not going to enable this, but there is a separate achievements list for most games with hardcore mode. So there's the regular mode and there's hardcore mode. And if that's something that you would like to participate with specifically, uh, then you can enable this. Now let's go down to user. Now you can set your regular RetroArch username. Uh, but we are going to want to go into accounts and then into retro achievements here. So I'm going to have to do some fancy editing to block out my password, but you're going to essentially add your retro achievement username and then your password. And this is why I said it should be something that you can easily remember as you'll have to manually input it. Go ahead and press enter on your username and go ahead and type it out. Uh, so mine is since I Brad, like it is in most places and you're going to press enter. Now see what it just did here it cleared the username well before my username was blank i pressed enter and then it added my my username that you can see very faintly in the background there however this new on-screen qwerty keyboard never disappeared now you can probably disable it uh, I don't know where to disable it as they've just recently changed around their UI a little bit. So uh, if you know where to disable it, I would actually suggest going to disable it. If you are using a keyboard, you don't need the on-screen keyboard. If you are using a controller, then I can see why you would need the keyboard. Except that right now it's currently bugged. So the reason why I had you made sure to enable save configuration on exit is because pressing escape here doesn't do anything. Backspace doesn't do anything and obviously enter didn't close it either. So we're going to have to hard close RetroArch. However, if we go back into RetroArch and we go over down to user and we go into accounts and retro achievements, your information should still be there. As long as you enable to save the configuration on exit, you should be good to go. Now there are more than one core that will that will utilize retro achievements, uh, but for me these are my favorite cores, and they also work with retro achievements. Like with the Super Nintendo uh, SNES, I use Beastness Balance, and that worked with retro achievements just fine. But so does a SNES 9X. Now I still suggest that you know, a user used BeastNest Balanced, but if for whatever reason you want to use SNES 9X, uh, then it will totally work. For Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy and Game Boy Color, uh, Gambate, uh, Gambat, uh, it's a weird name, uh, that will use Retro Achievements, and the MGBA Core will also use Retro Achievements for the GBA. For NES, I've seen that only Quick NES uh, will work. I found a list online a while back, but uh, other cores have been updated as well. So Nestopia and FCEUMM may also work with Retro Achievements. That's something that I can check here in a minute. And with the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive and the 32X, Pico Drive will work for the retro achievements as well. So I do use uh, Pico Drive specifically for the 32X, and I use Genesis Plus GX for the Genesis, but uh, Pico Drive may be the only one that will work with the retro achievements uh, through RetroArch. So let's use SNES as an example. So I know that Super Mario World, for example, has achievements. Now, unfortunately, not every game will have achievements, but you can add them to achieve retroachievements.org if you would like, or wait for somebody to create them. Okay, so here's Super Mario World. Let's press F1 to load up the uh, RetroArch menu. And I have BeastNest Balanced loaded with my custom config, and I'm logged into retroachievements.org. Let's press enter on quick menu and let's go down to the achievements list. And you can see here that, well, the achievements loaded. 
and we press backspace, go to the achievements list hardcore, and it should be the same list of achievements, but for hardcore mode. So you can see the name of the achievement and then how to uh, achieve it. So collect a feather will give you the achievement. I believe I can fly. Pretty simple, right? So if you would like to see a list of games that have achievements for them, go to site pages and then you can see popular games, supported games, and then your uh, list of consoles. You can also see things like commonly won achievements, hardest achievements, achievement lists, leaderboards, developer stats, things like that. And if you would like to work on achievements, uh, there are uh, pages on the website that will help you learn how to create achievements for games as well. And there's even a web API as well. So I also want to show off uh, Mega Drive and Genesis. So let's check that. And we can see here that Arrow the Acrobat 2 has achievements. All right, so I do want to show off the sake of Genesis now. And earlier I was saying that I'm not sure if Genesis plus GX will uh, show uh, or work with retroachievements.org, but if we press F1, go into the quick menu, and we scroll to the bottom, we can see the achievements list. So uh, Genesis plus GX should be working with retro achievements as well. So, you know, more cores will work with retro achievements than even I had originally thought, or at least more than I had originally thought several months ago. The, the last time that I really did anything related to retro achievements was several months ago. So RetroArch could have just simply updated. And that's the beauty of RetroArch is that the cores can just very easily update to allow for things like retro achievements. Uh, one thing to note, even if the core does support achievements, if you are not logged in to your retroachievements.org account uh, on that config, so I use a custom config for Genesis Plus GX, uh, and I wasn't logged in to that, uh, I wasn't logged into my account in that config, the achievements list for uh, normal and hardcore didn't show up at all. It was only once I logged in that the achievement lists showed up. So do keep that in mind. Just because you don't see the achievement list menu option doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just make sure that you're first logged in and then come into the quick menu and see if the achievement list is here. Okay, so now let's test GBA. And one of my favorite series of all time, Golden Sun. This should have retro achievements as well. So let's go to the quick menu and there we go. The achievements list. Oh yeah. I love RPGs with achievements, especially my old favorites. All right. So now let's test the NES with one of my favorite series of all times, the Legend of Zelda. So press F1, quick menu. There we go. We've got achievements. So yeah, um, I used the Nestopia core for this one. So even the quickness core isn't needed. So what I'm coming to terms with apparently is that uh, more cores are now utilizing retro achievements, which is fantastic. The more cores, the better, I say. All right, so let's test the Link's Awakening, the original one. So we're gonna press F1, quick menu. Haha, -ha, there we go, the achievements list. And this is using the Gambate core. And then let's check Oracle of Seasons. Probably my favorite Oracle game, if I had to, if I had to give you a favorite Oracle game. And there we go, there's an achievements list, but no achievements to display. So that means there's actually no achievements for this game. But the fact that this list pops up means that the core obviously is utilizing achievements. Oh, please tell me the Link's, Link's Awakening DX has some. Come on. Ah, people gotta get on that. What the, what, what the crap? All right, so the last system that I wanna go ahead and show real quick is the TurboGrafx 16. I do want to note too that the uh, platform doesn't have a lot of uh, achievements for games right now. Uh, there's only a handful. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Only 11 games through retro achievements. So if you are interested in making some achievements, uh, show the TurboGrafx 16 some love and hopefully TurboGrafx CD will get an update as well one of these days. But uh, let's go ahead and check Dragon Spirit, one of the games that does have retro achievements. We're gonna go into the menu, quick menu. 
achievement list. And there we go. Fantastic. There you go. Retroachievements.org integration in RetroArch makes things so much sweeter. It's pretty awesome. Retro achievements existing and having integration into RetroArch. And so your favorite cores can also have achievements attached to them. I, I find that so amazing. Modern emulation, everybody. Modern emulation. One thing to note, though, that it doesn't work with every system. So only these systems have achievements. Uh, in the future, there may be more 2D based systems that get achievements, but currently these are the only systems and 2D based systems are the easiest uh, in order to get uh, retro achievements to run uh, for very complicated reasons that I won't get into now. Uh, maybe one day uh, 3D based emulators will get uh, achievements, but uh, it's, it's, it's very complicated. So the fact that it even exists is astounding. But there you go. That's how you get it up and running. If you guys have any questions about this tutorial, then please leave your question in the comment section below. Jason and myself are more than happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. If you are a Patreon producer over at our Patreon page, then your name is now scrolling up on screen. If you would like to see your name in the Patreon producer credits in either any of the videos that we do or inside of Launchbox, then head on over to our Patreon link in the description below. At a minimum of $2, you get early access to shows like RSS, and at higher tiers, you start to unlock things like exclusive Discord server access and your producer credits. My name is Brad. The link to my channel is in the description below. I do lots of gaming content, so if that sounds like a cup of tea, I would appreciate a subscribe as well. Remember, for you geeks to play more games, earn those achievements, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!